Video games, like most forms of high production entertainment, are generally a collaborative effort. In order to make games successful, it is not enough to have an original or innovative idea. It also takes the support of a whole village of creators with talents in programming, music, art design, story structure, and business management and marketing. A game that is abandoned by a publisher, even if it is completed, can fail spectacularly due to being released at the wrong time or not at all. This is why some creators, like their games, fade into obscurity. Some gain a niche following, and some become icons. Today's video is based on the request of Hollowed Hope, a true fan of Shenmue and Sega, who asked for a video about gaming icon Yuji Naka. In the spirit of this request, this installment of Pet Projects of Gaming Icons will feature Rodea the Sky Soldier, a game that unfairly missed its window of opportunity for a successful release that was forced to compromise on Yuji Naka's original vision in order to support a system that it was not designed for. To Hollowed Hope and anyone else stopping by, I really hope you enjoy the video. But before you can understand Rodea the Sky Soldier, you have to understand Yuji Naka and his status as one of the most celebrated game designers of all time. Born in September of 1965 in Osaka, Japan, Yuji Naka decided at the age of 17 that he wanted to become a video game programmer. He developed this passion over years of spending his time copying and debugging type-in program code printed in computer magazines and books. In particular, Ryuichi Sakamoto's Yellow Orchestra program, which provided a way to compose music on a computer, captivated the young Yuji Naka at the possibilities of computer programming. He studied assemblers and writing code during his high school classes and, after graduating, decided to forego studying at a university in order to stay in his hometown. Naka would seek employment with Namco, but would be turned down as Namco had a policy of only hiring workers who graduated from university. In 1983, Naka would land a job with Sega, and along with Hiroshi Kawaguchi, would create the game Girls Garden for the SG-1000 as part of his training as a new hire. The supervisors at Sega were so impressed with the finished product that they soon put Yuji Naka to work on programming ports of Yu Suzuki's arcade classics such as Space Harrier to the Sega Mark III, known as the Sega Master System in other parts of the world. On this system, he would create an even larger name for himself for his work on the first Fantasy Star title in which he was responsible for programming the first-person dungeon areas that were designed with a quasi-3D animation effect. Naka's biggest break would prove to be his seminal contributions to Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis, also known as the Mega Drive. Naka would create a brilliant and innovative algorithm in which a sprite's position could be pinpointed and moved along a curve through the utilization of a dot matrix. Though the character design of Sonic the Hedgehog was created by Naoto Oshima, and the level designs would be constructed by Hirokazu Yasuhara, Yuji Naka's concept of rolling a ball through a series of winding tubes is hard to overstate in the importance of bringing to life the gameplay and character of Sonic the Hedgehog. Naka would eventually become the leader of the programming team that would come to be known as Sonic Team. It would not be possible to provide an adequate treatment of all the games that Naka headed or contributed to, but some of his most notable works for Sega include Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Sonic and Knuckles, as well as Phantasy Star 2, all for the Sega Genesis. Also, Nights into Dreams and Burning Rangers for the Sega Saturn, and also producing Sonic Adventure 1, Sonic Adventure 2, Phantasy Star Online, and Samba de Amigo, as well as directing Choo Choo Rocket for the Sega Dreamcast, as well as Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg for the Nintendo GameCube. With so many classic titles to his name, it's no wonder that, along with Yu Suzuki and Tetsuya Mizoguchi, Yuji Naka was considered to be one of the game-creating gods of Sega. On a personal level, Naka has a strong creative drive and a tremendous work ethic. He is known to be a jealous programmer that is not keen on allowing others to take advantage of his hard work. During the Sega Saturn days, Sega of America had a team working on the development of Sonic Extreme, the Sega Saturn project intended to truly bring Sonic into the arena 
of 3D platforming. This team had created much of the game by making use of Naka's amazing Knight's Engine, but did so without first notifying Yuji of their intentions. Infuriated by this, he threatened to leave Sega for good if the project was not scrapped and started over using something other than his engine. Naka can also struggle with tactfully conveying his thoughts and feelings, which has led him to accidentally offend others in the past. He once shared an anecdote about a time when he unintentionally offended his idol, Yu Suzuki, during a period when Suzuki was working on Shenmue, stating, At the time, it was called Virtua Fighter RPG. During that time, there weren't any Yu Suzuki produced arcade games, right? What a great pity. I love Yu Suzuki's arcade games. Naka continued that he worried he was not doing enough with his projects to make Sega competitive in the console market at the time. He felt insecure and continued to share. To be honest, I felt extremely bad for letting everyone down. It was as if I was lacking, from the perspective of the home console game division. And then the performance of the arcade division started to decline. At that time, at a certain big meeting, I said something to Yu Suzuki along the lines of, I wish you could pull the arcade games division back up again. Well, that really offended him. After my unfortunate comment, he didn't speak to me for around 18 months to two years after that. After Sega left the console business with the death of the Dreamcast, Yuji Naka tried to keep making things work at Sega for several years before leaving the company as head of Sonic Team in March of 2006. He shared in an interview that his departure stemmed from his need to create, stating, Before I left Sega, I was high up enough that I was looking at every game the company was developing. Once I was in that position, though, I found that I wanted to get into the nitty-gritty details instead with the games, including Sonic. The whole, it'd be better if this bit were like this instead of that type of thing. Since he preferred leading from the front lines as opposed to fulfilling a role akin to a business executive, Naka would form his own game development company called Probe, which received 10% of its funding as a company from Sega. Probe would release several games for smart devices, PC, and home consoles such as Let's Tap, Real Ski Jump, and Ivy the Kiwi, as well as developing Rodea the Sky Soldier for the Nintendo Wii. Naka was intrigued by the possibilities of creating a new IP with gameplay mechanics based around the Wii's motion controls. This is possibly partly due to the fact that a specialized controller was developed in the 90s for a cancelled sequel to Nights Into Dreams called Air Nights that was originally planned for the Sega Saturn and then the Dreamcast. These controllers, supposedly, made use of motion sensing during gameplay similar to the Wii concept. The gameplay and design of Rodea is similar to that of Knights, but with a heavier emphasis on combat. This could have been the spiritual successor to Knights that fans had been looking for. Development for the game was completed in 2010, and then nothing happened. Naka would be asked in interviews what was up with his Rodea project, and Naka would explain that the game was finished, but nobody would agree to publish it. He began to worry if the game would ever be released. Though the Wii version was finished and submitted in 2010, its release was delayed because executives also wanted to release a 3DS version of the game at launch, which was being developed by Katakawa Games. Naka's communication with them was limited during this development period, and he was unsure when the game would be released, if ever. Eventually, so much time passed that Nintendo announced their intention to release their next console, the Wii U. This troubled Naka. He once lamented, One unfortunate thing about the Wii U announcement, it doesn't come with a Wii Remote, so Rodea and all the other Wii titles I created, people won't be able to play it with a Wii Remote. They'll have to use the Wii U gamepad. I created the game specifically for the Wii Remote, so it's going to turn into a totally different experience. I'm really down about that because Rodea is a really good game. Katakawa Games would begin work porting the 3DS version of the game to the Wii U. The Wii U version would finally be released in 2015 and would differ from that of Yuji Naka's original Wii version visually by incorporating the use of filters in an attempt to hide the fact that the Wii U version was basically the same as the 3DS incarnation. The filters make the colors look muted and drab, and the frame rate is severely inferior to that of the bright and colorful Wii version which achieves 60 frames per second in several places. 
The Wii U version's controls make use of the gamepad rather than the Wii motion controls, making Rodea control much more slowly. He is further limited by a flight meter which depletes as you fly, taking away the feeling of freedom that flying brings to the Wii version. I believe Katakawa Games did the best they could with the hand they were dealt, but the 3DS and Wii U versions of Rodea the Sky Soldier do not capture Yuji Naka's original vision at all. Luckily, some versions of this game come with the original Wii variant packed in, and since the Wii U version is backwards compatible with the Wii, you can still play Rodea the Sky Soldier as originally intended. Yuji Naka even went on record urging consumers to play the Wii version of the game rather than the Wii U version. The critical reception of Rodea the Sky Soldier was poor to average for the Wii U, and average to positive for the Wii. Many reviews stated blatantly that you should open the case, throw away the Wii U copy, and then only play the Wii version. It is clear that Rodea the Sky Soldier would have been much better received had it been released for the console as it was intended in 2010, when it was finished and submitted for production. Unfortunately, Rodea the Sky Soldier will probably be the first and only entry in this series due to the bad luck of being released in the wrong place at the wrong time. What do I think of Rodea the Sky Soldier? Well, if we're talking about Yuji Naka's original Wii version, then I would say it's a good game. I enjoy playing it and it brings back the old feelings of whimsy that I experienced when first playing Nights into Dreams. I can't help but think that if this game were properly supported, it might have become its own franchise and possibly turned into something similar to a cross between Knights and Gravity Rush. As it stands, I'm just glad that the original version was released at all, and that I was able to play an interesting game that was the pet project of a game designer as distinguished as Yuji Naka. Rodea, you're so amazing! See? Isn't he the greatest? I'll say. You sure are the real deal, Rodea. <laughs> That's it for my third video in this series. I hope you had a good time watching. Let me know what you thought of the video and Rodea the Sky Soldier in the comment section below. And until next time, be safe and take care.